you know, Ben, what is your top five winter squash in order of your favorite? So we're hanging out outside today. It's a, you know, a beautiful day out. Got all this beautiful squash in front of me. And so today, what I wanted to do was talk about the squash. And what a better time to talk about it than while I'm doing the mono cleanse. So I'm doing a 28 day mono cleanse where all I ate for the 28 days was squash during the day. And then at night, I'd have Brussels sprouts or asparagus and that's what this consisted of for 28 days straight if you want to know more about this cleanse you can find it in Anthony Williams cleanse to heal book page 202 he breaks the whole cleanse down and how to do it it's super simple it's super easy anybody can do it and if you want to do it for three days, you can do it for three days. If you want to do it for a week, you can do it for a week. And it's not like I'm just eating squash, asparagus, and Brussels sprouts. I start my morning just like every morning. I have my lemon water, I do my celery juice, and then I switch over to my squash. And then throughout the day, I'm still having my lemon honey water and lemon waters. And then at night, I'll switch over to the asparagus or the Brussels sprouts. And I'll do another video on this going into detail on my results. And we've done a lot of liver cleansing and we've done a lot of liver cleansing videos. So if you haven't seen those videos already, go check those out. But this cleanse is different than the liver cleanse because the liver cleanse is just focused on the liver where this is focused on the whole body. So today what I thought I would do is walk you through all the different squash that I've been eating on this cleanse and then I even want to break down like my top five. So if you guys aren't doing this cleanse and just want to know the, the best squash out there or maybe you're a, a grower and you want to grow some squash for next season and you're wondering well what seed should I get this video will break down my top five squash so one thing Anthony says is if if you're trying to do this cleanse off season or maybe you just don't have access to winter squash during the winter then uh, you can get frozen squash and that'll work just fine but because you know we're here in California we have access to a ton of different winter squash we went to the farmers market and we picked up all of the squash that you see in front of me here. So let's talk about some of this squash. So everybody knows the butternut squash. I mean, this is commonly available everywhere. You can probably pick this up in the grocery stores. We ate a lot of this. This is a favorite. But this year, I found this one. And this one is called the honey nut. And it looks like a butternut squash, but it's sweeter than a butternut squash and tastes a little bit different than a butternut squash. And this, this is not one on my top five list, the honey nut. So one squash that I did not eat throughout this entire cleanse was the spaghetti squash. And the spaghetti squash just isn't high in calories. So I just, I stayed away from it. So on this cleanse, I wasn't eating any fruit. So I really miss that, uh, that glucose from fruit, that, you know, that sugary sweetness. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I mean, there's still plenty of glucose in all of the, the squash you see on the table here, but what I noticed was I kept gravitating towards like the, the sweeter squash. And I think that was because I was just really missing fruit. So because I was missing that fruit, I went towards those sweet ones. So we've got a bunch of delicata here. There's some small delicata. I got a biggie here. So this is your delicata squash. And this is, yeah, this has always been one of our favorite squash. And it's, it's sweet, the skin is sweet. It's got a really good taste. So that's one I've been eating a lot on this cleanse. Then we've got we've got the um, the classic the acorn squash and Anthony's got some good recipes on the acorn squash. You basically cut this in half and just put it right in the oven 
and then take some maple syrup and some pecans and sprinkle the, the pecans and then the maple syrup on it and then you just you eat it you know you eat it whole you don't chop it up or anything so that's another sweet one the other one I don't have on this table is a sweet dumpling and it the skin reminds me of a, a delicata but I, I, the shape of it is more like the um, the acorn squash so imagine an acorn squash with this uh, this delicata skin and that's a sweet dumpling and that's another sweet one all right the next one here is the kabocha squash so this is an orange or known as a red kabocha uh, there's also green kabocha don't like the green I like the the orange red one this is sweet I never tried it before until I started this cleanse and we went down to the market and one of the farms recommended it and uh, pretty much had this every day on my cleanse. I love this one. And then we've got pumpkins. So the variety here is a sugar pie pumpkin. I like the sweeter pumpkins. I notice, you know, when I always had uh, pumpkin pie, I'd always have to add like maple syrup to the pumpkin pie to make it even sweeter. So for some reason, pumpkins just aren't sweet enough for me. But the sugar pie pumpkins, they're definitely the sweetest pumpkin that, uh, that I found out there. And what I notice is since we're eating the same stuff every single day on this cleanse, my taste buds are like amplifying. So the squash have become sweeter and sweeter and sweeter the longer that I've gone on this cleanse. You have to remember that we're all pretty spoiled with the fact that we can just go out and eat whatever it is we want to eat. But when you take a step back and you eat one thing for a given period of time, you forget how those other foods taste, which then makes this so much sweeter. This one is more of a, like a square squash, it's not as rounded. But we love this one, we've been eating it for years, and typically how we'll cook this is we'll cut, a, cut it up and bake it like french fries. But on this cleanse, you can't bake anything. You have to steam it all. So what we've been doing is we wash it first, because you never know who else has touched this before it, it has ended up on your countertop. So we always wash our stuff first. So we wash it, then we cut it, then we put it in the steamer, we steam it, we leave the skin on, you can eat squash skin, most people don't know that. So you leave the skin on and uh, steam it and you can eat it cut up, cubed if you wanted to. But what I've been doing is I've just been blending my squash so it looks like this. And then I just got a spoon and then I just eat it mashed. And that does the trick and you know if you're sensitive to the skin of the squash and some people can be if they have a lot of digestive problems going on then what will the the blending of the squash will work out a lot better in your favor because there are minerals and there are vitamins on the skin of the squash so if you blend it, you're still going to get those minerals and those vitamins on the skin of the squash in your body. So last year we definitely grew a lot of squash. We had a lot of space last year where we farmed. This year we've been farming in an urban environment, in a city, so we don't have as much space. But we did plant some squash plants and they did grow and we got, got some squash. But last year we grew a lot of the buttercup. We grew some this year too. A lot of delicata, we grew some this year as well. Uh, grew some sugar pie pumpkins. We grew this one called Thelma Sanders, and we actually got that. I don't have it in front of me, but we got that when we were going to the farmer's market when I first started on this cleanse. That's a good one, it's on the sweeter side. So if you ever come across a Thelma Sanders, be sure to pick one up and try it. If you don't have them where you are, grow it. Get some Thelma Sander seeds and try growing it this, this next season. Talking about seeds, throughout this cleanse I've been saving a lot of the seeds that I've been getting from the farmer's market. So when I eat a squash I'll take the seeds out and then I'll save the seeds for next season. And what I'm doing at the market is I'm talking to these farmers and I'm asking them how they're growing their crops. So then I know 
if I want to save the seeds, I know there was no toxic chemicals being sprayed on the farm or synthetic chemicals or synthetic fertilizers. None of that stuff was used on the farm, which then isn't going to carry over to the seeds that I'm collecting out of the crop. But if you guys were going to ask me like, all right, you know, Ben, what is your top five winter squash in order of your favorite? So I would start with the kabocha. The kabocha squash, this is a new favorite, but this has definitely been my favorite one that I've ate on this cleanse. It's the, the red or orange kabocha squash. Then I'd say number two is one we've always loved, which is the delicata squash. Number three on that list is a, a new one. This is the honey nut. It looks like a butternut, but it's uh, called the honey nut squash. And that one is like a, a super sweet squash and I, I really enjoyed it. And then the next one on the list is going to be the buttercup. This has always been one of my favorites, but the buttercup is uh, probably number four. And then the fifth one is at Thelma Sanders, but that one I don't have in front of me to show you. But uh, Thelma Sanders is always a good one, kind of harder to find at the markets, but if you get your hands on one, uh, definitely try it out. You'll like it. All right, so, you know, that's it. That's that's everything. I'm going to get back to my, you know, my uh, mashed squash here. I'm going to get back to my cleanse. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed learning about all the different squash that we've been eating on this cleanse. And now you know, you could go to the store, you could look for the squash in this video, and you could try them out. And if you guys have some squash that I didn't have in this video that you really enjoy, that you think I should try, leave a comment in the description below and let me know what those squashes are. And next year, I'll give them a try. Hey, maybe I'll even get some seeds this year and then start growing them for next season. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.